the weirdly shaped formation of rocks you see here, less than 50 miles from Los Angeles, are named after one of California's most ruthless bandits, the Bercio Vasquez. He cut a trail of vengeance in the early 70s from San Diego to San Jose. So Hollywood often depicts the Old West with an air of romanticism. Likeable, relatable gunslingers, saving the damsel in distress, drinking whiskey, riding off into the sunset. But there's one real life character that shares a lot of similarities to this romanticized version of the Old West. And right now, we are in one of his favorite hideouts, uh, a place that still bears his name today. So you may recognize this Marscape from just about every B-Western from 1930 all the way to the mid-1970s. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Don't pay no attention to that, Alfie. He can't even hold a gun, much less shoot it. This rock even has a nickname, Kirk's Rock, because of its prominent feature in an episode of Star Trek. So they're always filming shit here. So by the end of the Mexican War, all this became public land and soon was discovered by Tiburcio Vasquez, a known Mexican bandit who robbed and stole all up and down California. Tiburcio Vasquez had this sort of mythological stature among Mexican Americans. He was looked at as almost like a Robin Hood type, you know, robbing from the rich, giving to the poor. Pure silver. Which wasn't entirely true, but he played up that mythos as well. Um, what is known about Vasquez is that he was apparently handsome, uh, played guitar, wrote poetry, and loved the company of women. Vasquez spent years robbing and stealing from wagons and stores up and down California. He and his gang were robbing a store in the town of Tres Pinos when something went horribly wrong, and three innocent people were shot and killed by the gang. Back on the run, Vasquez and his gang continued to seek shelter in the caves of Vasquez Rocks. So apparently the story goes that Vasquez, after the botched robbery of Tres Pinos, came back here to hide. He was having an affair with one of his gang members' wives. And that gang member got so jealous, he ratted out Vasquez to the nearby sheriff. How far is it? Not very far. Just around the bend in that canyon. We can cut him off. Let's go. And soon, two posses moved in on this valley, one from the north and one from the south and a gunfight ensued. This gun battle between the sheriff and Vasquez happened, and Vasquez ended up getting away. So um, he escaped. I mean, he knew these canyons and these caves really well. He was eventually caught and hanged in San Jose uh, in 1875, but um, yeah, I mean, this proved truly to be one of his best hiding places. So why does any of this matter? You know, who cares about some 19th century bandito or these old movies that were shot here? To which I would reply, a landscape with such a rich real life history being used in Hollywood films as a backdrop in fictional stories is not without irony. Film is perhaps the most tangible window into our past, and with this real life location only being 30 miles outside of downtown Los Angeles, that window just got a little bit bigger. Hey, if you guys like that, click there to subscribe and click there to watch more videos. This is my bathtub. You know what happened here? Derek took a bath here. <laughs>